Hello everybody, welcome to What About The Game. Today I'm going to be talking about Grand Kingdom on the PlayStation Vita. So Grand Kingdom is a turn-based tactical RPG and the debut game of Monochrome Corp, published in the West by NIS America, and it's available on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita. This is a review of the Vita version. The premise of Grand Kingdom is that you are a leader of mercenaries, who after briefly being independent, are invited to join an even larger mercenary group. From here, after a brief introduction to your new clan, your skills are tested in the tutorial. So as Grand Kingdom is a turn-based tactical RPG, the gameplay constantly switches between two fields. The main part of the gameplay will be in the missions, where you'll move your team across the map on set paths, encountering and fighting enemies. It's very board game-like, especially since your unit is represented by something resembling a chess piece. Maps are often surprisingly large, but mostly linear. Uh, there are a few different routes and hidden paths to take, but that's about it really. The other half of the game will be spent at your headquarters, where you prepare your troops, check missions and even interact with people. Sadly, it's all done through still images and menus like a visual novel or an Etrian Odyssey kind of game. And I can understand the reasoning behind this style. For one, it's much cheaper than building a big explorable world. And, you know, with a limited budget, you have to do what you can. The most disappointing aspect of Grand Kingdom for me is in the story and the characters, especially regarding your character and your companions, because they take a backseat to the action. Your character is literally faceless, voiceless, and has absolutely no character at all. You're joined from the beginning by a longtime comrade, Flint, and a new assistant, Lilia, both of whom act like the odd couple. Uh, Flint is the rash, overly zealous warrior who thinks nothing more than charging in head first, uh, whereas Lily on the other hand is cautious, prudent and more thoughtful. The content on which the story is told is divided into a handful of warring kingdoms and your mercenary faction is sort of stuck in the middle of it. The current division of the continent was a result of the collapse of an old Uldian empire or something, although shreds of its past still exist and this plays an important part of the story. So yeah, I was quite disappointed with the story overall, and considering that's why many people play an RPG, then, you know, I think this might be quite a big downfall for the game. But another important part of an RPG is in its battle system, considering the whole game is built around it. Your motley crew of four customised mercenaries stack up against other soldiers and beasts on a three-lane arena. Each character has an action gauge, which dictates how many actions they can do per turn, whilst also having a movement gauge which, as you can guess, sets how far they can move per round. You have multiple different attacks at your disposal which vary according to the soldier's class and while setups can differ, attacks are mapped to the square, triangle and circle. Then, if you hold the L button, it switches those buttons to three more attacks for a total of six different abilities. And there's tons of variables to account during battles, uh, whether it's your enemy's abilities, traps laying around the battlefield, or having obstacles in the way, support fire from catapults, there's just a lot going on in such a small area and I think the battles are actually quite fun. I really enjoyed doing it and it's where I enjoyed most of my time playing the game. As you hire units, you'll find that there are many different classes available. Strangely, you only have a handful of available warriors to hire at one time. Every so often the stock of available mercenaries like is refreshed and you can choose some more different classes. I found this to be unnecessarily restrictive, considering that no matter what, all the new hirelings start at level 1. I think it would have been better just to have all of them available at the same time. Once you've selected a newcomer, you can customise their appearance to quite a decent level, although again, this makes the game have less character than it could have. Although they may look unique, they're just blank portraits still. Uh, they have no stake in the story, and therefore no meaning in the grand scheme of things. As you level up your fighters, they'll gain new abilities that can be equipped or not. Each character's moveset is really customizable. Um, another problem I found is that once I had a set team, I found it very awkward to change it. Since new members begin life so lowly leveled, you know, it made integration rather a pain. Uh, you could send them out on quests by themselves to gain levels and also allow them to join and form different squads, um, you know, with fighters of similar ability. But it's not really an ideal solution. There's actually a lot going on in Grand Kingdom. It's really quite overwhelming. Uh, it's one of the reasons that this review has taken so long. You know, just having to wrap my head around the game and just let it sink in. 
Um, it's not a negative per se, but I think uh, more explaining over a longer period could have done the game wonders. You know, a better tutorial system rather than just having text boxes would have been, you know, nice for me personally. As you can probably see, Grand Kingdom looks absolutely gorgeous. The artwork of the characters and the monsters just looks magnificent. The whole 2D hand-drawn style it really pops out of the Vita screen and it even looks good on the PlayStation TV, which is what you can see here. Sadly, enemies are often repeated and it doesn't seem like there's too much variety, uh, but since it's so well animated and it looks amazing, it bothered me much less than it should have. There's quite a large online component to Grand Kingdom, and again, it's quite overwhelming to be honest. The structure of the missions is different to the online game, but the gameplay is generally the same. For the online, you can form contracts with one of the handful of kingdoms in the game's world, and you will fight for them in the struggle against the other factions, trying to gain and defend territory. It's more chaotic compared to the offline component. Enemies will move on the map in real time now. Whether they're controlled by other players or AI is really unclear, for me anyway. Um, but either way, it's a sudden shift that takes a while to get used to. The actual battles remain the same. The slightly different take on missions makes it an interesting diversion and it definitely needs to be tried a few times to get to grips with it. Even now, I'm struggling to form an opinion of it due to not really getting it, to be honest. Overall, I can recommend Grand Kingdom to RPG fans with a Vita. It's not quite as amazing as I'd hoped due to its limited scale, but it's still got a fun action you know, with the battles and there's plenty of content to get your money's worth. Sadly, the story and especially the characters aren't up to much, but the gameplay alone will keep you going uh, in this sometimes overwhelming game. Okay guys, if you've enjoyed this video then be sure to like and subscribe, that will help me out. You can read the full review of Grand Kingdom at whataboutthegame.com, that will really help me out so much. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter if you want to. All the links are below. Thanks guys, bye bye.